Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to no, that was bad. Casual it Obsession. It is the try horror again, movie podcast for stop. very, very <laughs> horror stop, stop, people. Do it again. Cut it, cut it, cancel You gotta do a different over. thing with start your start voice over. on the hello, Read hello. Hey everybody, welcome back to Casual Obsession, the horror movie podcast where we talk about horror movies. Um, I really didn't think that line through as I was saying, it just kind of came into my head, but we're going to keep rolling. Today, we're talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm your host, Noah. With me is Nina. Hello. And Jeff. And I host the podcast. (laughs) And Emma. I also host the podcast. I there was going to go. say that I'm also a host, but I'll just pretend I'm a guest for this episode. <laughs> yeah, thank you special for coming, guest. our special guest, um, yeah. Mrs. LaCroix oh. Boy. I was very I was happy just, to be here. <laughs> I was just trying to be redundant to make fun of Noah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I say that I was hosting it twice? No, you said horror oh. podcast where we review oh. horror movies. So I was doing okay. a thing where it's <laughs> like, hi, I'm your host, the one who hosts the podcast. <laughs> With me hosting this podcast are the other podcast hosts also hosting the podcast. (laughs) See, I thought you were just making fun of me for introducing you guys and maybe it would come off as guests. But anyway, that's not important. We're here to talk about A Nightmare on Elm Street. What a nightmare. Freddy Krueger, the Springwood Slasher. Uh, Or as I referred to it the other day mistakenly, The Nightmare Before Elm Street because (laughs) I was confused. (laughs) Actually on a- Why would it? Okay, I have several questions about what led you to think that was the right one. He remembered a lot more music. I'm not saying I action. thought it was right. Those are the words that came out of my mouth. That's all. I'm really, that's really funny. Oh, uh, but yeah. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, you'll remember me saying from the last two episodes that I do not like slashers. Well, I got a plot twist. I really like this movie. What? I knew it. <laughs> No, it was a, it was a really great plot twist. Literally from the moment the movie started, she was a hundred percent more invested than she was in Friday or Halloween. I thought you said, I, <laughs> I thought you had seen this movie. And you I said have you didn't seen, like I, it. I have seen it before. Yeah, no, uh, I have. Did you just it's like just, it more this time? I, I I've always liked it. I I don't remember if I said this on the other two episodes. That you this did is not. Like, oh. I told I told my coworker. That's what I'm remembering. Fuck your coworker. Um, well, no, if he's listening, he, he already he knows. But... To this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Johnny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Do you think yeah, he's no, listening? I, no. I'm trying to get him to listen to it. Okay. So maybe Ooh. one day he'll hear this in the future. Eventually. But the point is, Ooh. I I have always liked this one more than the other ones, but I forgot that I actually like liked it full stop. Like I was like, oh yeah. As far as slasher go, slashers go, I guess it's not that bad. But I do full on just have a good time with this one. Yeah. Um. This is definitely a fun one. Do we want to do a quick summary, Noah? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna open us up with just some information about this movie. Uh, this is one of Wes Craven's freaking mega blockbuster freaking series that he has his franchises. It's like this and Scream are his two like big things. And honestly, he's not even involved in almost any of the rest of the Nightmare movies. Um, which is kind of funny, if if we're being honest. It's very funny. Um, I don't even think he directs another one until the 7th. Is that the Nightmare? Because yeah. th- that's the one that at work I keep, everyone thinks is like the first one because it says Wes Craven on it. Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. It's yes, that is the first A Nightmare on Elm I Street know, right? movie. No. <laughs> fucking dumbasses. Anyway. Dude. Holy crap. It's not hard to remember. Welcome that to Nightmare on Elm the Street. One. The episode that gets me fired. Anyway. We're talking about the movie. Right. What's the synopsis, Noah? 
We're not at the synopsis yet. We're here with other info first. Yeah, we're I got the a lot of facts. info to throw around about oh, this. Neat. Tell me the cool so stuff about this movie, Noah. I'm still listening. Um, I have a whole trivia section that I'm going to hit after we get into some other things because the trivia is a little spoilery. Makes sense. So I'm going to open us up with trivia once we hit spoilers. All right. Um, so I'm going to actually, firstly, Emma, how did I know you were surprised at Kevin Bacon? Yeah. Were you surprised at Johnny Depp? So that was Johnny Depp. That was this is Johnny, Johnny Depp's Depp. first ever movie. Wow. This, okay. So whoa, I hold like, on. So not only is it his first big role, but it's his first movie. Period. As far as Wes Craven knew, he said that, like, as far as he knew, the kid had never been in front of a camera before. He wow. looks like. Was this it, to before be Twenty One Jump Street? Yes. Wild. Yeah, I like. I saw him, and I was, and from an angle, I was like. That guy kind of looks like Johnny Depp. And then Mm -hmm. he turned and I saw more. I was like, I don't think it's Johnny Depp, though. I think it's just some other kid. Um, No, this is Johnny Depp. He did. uh, He he did a bloody good job. (laughs) (laughs) He did. Wink. Is Johnny Depp British? Um, Is he? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I think he's American. So. Oh, wait. American. That was a reference to the... Oh, I got you. I got you. He, yeah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> You're very on top of things. Good job, Jeff. Good job. <laughs> yeah, 21 Jump Street didn't come out until 87. Wild. I remember so him three being years way before younger that. in that. He's uh, what, like 17 in this? Uh, maybe. He got hired because Wes Craven's daughters thought he was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, Wes Craven's daughter. It was They're a choice between Johnny Depp and a couple other people. And he was just like, I don't know who I'm going to pick. This kid's a nobody. And then his kids were just like, Dad, they were he's a- sexy. <laughs> they were ahead of their time. <laughs> Good what for them. What an interesting casting process. <laughs> oh, I have an even more interesting casting note uh, that we'll talk about in a second. But let's let's talk ratings for a hot second. Well, also, you haven't done no, the yeah. no spoiler synopsis yet. It's do not we, our do ratings we do ratings? About. Oh, yeah. No, this is this is critical acclaim ratings. Um, I wanted to touch on Roger Ebert because the man has opinions about horror franchises that and are he's not wrong that about good. all of them. He's wrong about a lot of them. He gave <laughs> Halloween a four out of four. He gave Friday Part Two a half star. I give him a half star. <laughs> he gave the Nightmare Remake one star and Part Three one and a half stars, but he didn't touch the original. Um, but I. And that's the thing. He's actually really generous to certain movies. And he made a horror movie once that was really nasty, apparently. Like, so it's it's really hard to nail down what it is that he wants out of one of these movies. I never right? even knew Roger Ebert made movies. He did not make a lot of movies. I thought he, made, he just I'm, wrote things about them. I'm pretty sure we're talking single-digit movies. Right, right. That he was involved in. And his horror movie was so bad that he was like, you know what? Fuck horror movies. They all suck. No, this was after he had been trashing them for years and then made one after that. Oh, to prove that no he knew idea what why. he was doing. Okay. Mm-hmm. So IMDb uh, gives us a 7.5. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 94. Metacritic gives it a 93. And Letterboxd gives it a 3.8 out of 5. So, like... All in all, this movie is regarded very, very well. A lot of people like this movie. I I like this movie. I don't know. But Noah, what's this movie about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was collecting my thoughts, getting ready to move on to the next topic, and then my brain went just dead. So this movie is about um, some kids who... Uh, live on Elm Street, or at least two of them do. And it's, uh, you know, it's about some kids who have some bad dreams where they think that someone is stalking them and trying to hurt them in their dreams. And as it turns out, that is exactly what's happening. <laughs> Whoa, what a twist. I don't think that's a spoiler. I'm pretty sure everyone no, knows you, that you Freddy Krueger is pretty the... pretty quick. Because, I think like, everybody knows that at this point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Freddy Krueger I mean, hops in your dreams and kills you. Spoilers, y'all. The sled is Rosebud the whole time. 
Whoa. Whoa. Um, the sled is Rosebud, huh? I mean, and in the you movie. You were getting on me for spoiling Agatha Christie's mousetrap. Ah, oh, dang it. Now I'm going to have to blur that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the mousetrap was also Rosebud. Stop what? saying mousetrap. We are all Rosebud <laughs> on this blessed day. <laughs> anyway. I, um,. No, that's not a spoiler, though, because it's, like, majorly hinted at, because when she's talking about her nightmare, everybody else is like, I had a nightmare, too. And then, like... I love that, by the way. Like, yeah. good friend support. Everyone's just like, oh, you had a bad dream? Fuck you, I had a bad dream. Yeah. And then and then they're talking about it, they're like, we all had the same bad dream. Whoa. And, and not a single I one of them thought that that was weird. Love Johnny Depp's character being like, nah, no, never happens to me. I sleep all the time. And then later on, he's like, I haven't slept in weeks. And, yeah. and Nancy <laughs> just doesn't address it. She straight up ignores it. She's just like, yeah, sucks, doesn't it? And she moves right on. Poor guy. Actually, I gotta. I want to talk about the people not sleeping in this movie when we get to that point later. Cause oh man, oh yeah, I, I'm I've had very excited. As well, okay. All right, so I'm because I have a lot to talk about with this movie. Uh, let's hit our recommendations real quick and our trigger warnings, and then let's get into things because I have so many things I'm excited to bring up. Okay. Heck yeah. All right, so I like this movie a lot. I give this movie a nine out of ten. Oh. Uh, I, I ranked it that months ago. I checked my ranking, and I'm like, you know what? I stand by that number. I Nine like Star that Noah number. is consistent this time. Nine Star Noah is back. Yeah, unlike with Halloween. With a movie um, that's actually good. This movie holds up. <laughs> the effects in this movie are fantastic. They're so much fun. The filming of it is really good. It's just a very enjoyable experience start to finish. Yeah. Nina? Nina? Okay, yeah. Uh, this 100% breaks the slasher rule. Like I mentioned before, this one's not a 5 out of 10 and then like a 10 out of 10 on the slasher scale. This one is, I'd say, probably an 8 for me. Um, it's it's still not like my favorite thing ever, but oh my goodness, do I love just the chaotic energy that Freddy has where it's just like, hey, watch me absolutely destroy myself and that's a mood. Um, so yeah, 8 out of 10. If you if you like chaotic energy, if you like old movies, if you like special effects, defo, defo watch it. Jeff, how about you? Uh, I say definitely watch this movie. It's, you know, it, it's 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 important as as all the uh well, not all, but most of the horror movies coming out around that time tended to be. I give it like uh I I did not love it as much as you guys did. I give it like uh like a 7. Interesting. So That's interesting. Okay. Um, I actually hated it. Uh-huh. Um, really? Yeah, okay. I've been okay. I've been keeping this as a surprise. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I gave. Oh, oh. thank the Lord! I'm like, oh no! no I wanted to hear Ellen, about why you totally hated it. Totally in line with her oh. though. She... I wish you could have seen my face. I just went. I w- <laughs> I just died. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I think I gave Halloween like an eight. Um, and obviously, uh, Halloween is in the lead for the slasher that I have enjoyed the most. I am going to give Nightmare on Elm Street. Are you ready for this? Better, 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 better. An 8.1. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Slightly better than Halloween. Oh, that man. moment when you don't oh, want man. to rate it more than an 8, but you need to make it clear you liked it just a little more than Halloween. Exactly. <laughs> I That's respect exactly it. what it was. <laughs> <laughs> not to say i don't have my problems with the movie but oh no it absolutely was, it was a really good time um and yeah it was a really really good time i'll, I'll expand on that more later post spoilers yeah. nice oh, i'm very excited all right uh trigger warning wise um so it's not explicitly stated in this movie and it's not actually explicitly stated until the remake. But Freddy is coded as a child predator. Mm-hmm. He is also a child murderer. He's yeah. not a good dude. He he's kind of he's kinda of, he's kinda of creepy. He's kinda of weird. Yep. It's kinda of just he's an uncomfortable person to watch. So I don't I don't know. I um I'd have a, a couple triggers to add. Yeah, well. please do. Um 
Uh, obviously, with a lot of these movies, there's a gore trigger warning. I'd oh, say yeah. if you have, like, a weak stomach, there's a lot of gross gore in this one. It's not just, like, oh, scary. Yeah, deathy there's some gore. pus in this movie. There's some maggots. pretty nasty oozing, some maggots. There's yeah, a blob of so eels covered in mud at Freddy one point. Freddy himself is not super nice to look at. He's uh, not cute. <laughs> He's not cute. No, uh, no. He is not. Um, and then my other thing is, and this one surprised me. It didn't really like trigger me that badly, but I could see it triggering someone else. If you have like a fear of like mental institutions or people not believing that someone else is is losing their mind or something, uh, this this movie does have a lot of that near the end. So yeah, it's yeah. it stressed me out in a big way. So if that stresses you out, just up front, that's a warning. But other than that. Uh, There's no dog in this movie. No dog. No dog. No dog death. I do want to mm-hmm. add a couple more. Okay. Uh, okay. One is body horror. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and this this may be teetering on the edge. I don't I, I don't actually know because I don't have this phobia or problem. Um, but is it try? trichophobia or something where you're afraid is of it like the afraid holes. Of holes that's trip trippophobia i believe yeah, trypophobia. i do not think that that hits it um, okay i, I like, actually had that thought as well but i i'm i personally like freddy's face it. is that what you're talking about yeah his face is very cratered and yeah. i don't think i think what you what triggers for me is more geometric and hole like like holes. honeycomb stuff no it has to be on people for <laughs> for a honeycomb to really get to me Fair like enough. honeycomb's fine but like it has to look unnatural i think freddie doesn't look natural but he does not trigger those kind of feelings he just kind of looks like a man who got his skin removed wait <laughs> do, you, do you have trip masterphobia a little bit a little bit oh. that's i not not like diagnosed or anything but boy howdy if i look it up on google I really do hate that they show images as like a, it's stuff like this. And I'm like, well, thank you, Google. That's great of you. That was really cool. Uh, I'm going to Google something real quick just to see what happens. Hold on. I'm not Googling that, but. I don't think you need a professional diagnosis to like confirm that you have a phobia. I think with phobias, it's like if it affects your day to day life, that's when you you need to like go to a professional. So if you're like not able to do things that you want to do because of your phobia, that's one thing. Huh. But otherwise, like if you have an aversion, it's pretty easy to like self diagnose a phobia. It just like don't don't overuse it. Please. So if you Google don't, don't overuse that. If you Google chorophobia, you have to scroll a little bit to get to pictures of clowns. So this is like interesting targeted against tripophobes yeah yeah that, that's nice yeah no tripophobia is like immediately right there it's like holes yeah you know why because it's a reddit um, meme oh uh, you know what it is that's true You're right i yeah because like you don't need to necessarily diagnose yourself to say or you don't need to get a diagnosis to say that you're afraid of something in particular like me that's with fair. sharks because fuck sharks Uh, (laughs) um, no that's super valid but also speaking of fuck things let's head on over come join me in emma's scary corner i'm very excited for the scary corner emma how scary was this movie that's a great question noah thank you for asking that for me unprompted um yeah no problem this is what one would call a horror movie uh it's in that genre it is one of those. Um, yeah. One would call it that. Huh? One would call it that. Yeah, yeah, true. And so horror movies obviously are scary. And um, this movie is no different. It's it's very scary. Um, I jumped dos tiempos. Ooh, really? For those Ooh. that don't speak Spanish, that means two times. Oh. Thank you for um, helping me out with that because I totally beefed a Spanish translation at work and my boss won't stop making fun of me for it. So I appreciate <laughs> the help. Well, um, yeah, so I jumped twice, which is, of course, tied for the record with Halloween. Right. Um, but I jumped just a little bit more in each of those times than I did in Halloween. Like point um, one more? Like point one more. <laughs> and so obviously I've got to give this a 10.1 out of 10 scary. Whoa. I respect Whoa. it. I respect it. We get a new record. Yeah. So uh, be careful, everyone. Bear, bear scare. 
All right. Spoiler summary. All right, so I got I got some fun trivia here to drop you on your tell heads. Tell us the spoilers first. Yeah, you, people will not know what you're talking about as much unless you talk about. The I always forget first. that I'm, that for the spoiler summary, I'm actually supposed to give a summary that's spoilery rather than we can talk spoilers now. <laughs> yeah, you guys um, typically you think the like phrase jump into talking means. about it. <laughs> All right, so the spoiler summary. Um, Freddy Krueger is a man who killed children, and after he was arrested. There was some paperwork problems, and he got let go on technicalities. So the parents in town found him at his abandoned boiler room factory, <laughs> apparently, because that's the biggest boiler room Very I've ever seen in my life. Very vague description of a location. I oh, yeah. She's just they like, say abandoned his... boiler room, but they never say, like, where the boiler well, room was Wasn't he a located. janitor at the school? I kind of felt like it was the boiler yeah, room was... at the school. Yeah, they were supposed to have, like... There, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. There's not a lot of Freddy lore in the first movie. All the other stuff that has been added you is at the better of the details. Yeah. Uh, later. Freddy himself anyway, isn't even really all that Freddy in this movie. He, I forgot that he's not real quippy in this one. The way he he's is really later. not very quippy. He's just like, watch this. Cuts off fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, though, so the parents kill him. That was a long time ago. Everyone moves on. And now, out of nowhere, all these kids start having bad dreams about this guy, Fred Krueger. Side note, I hate Fred Krueger. That's yeah, they not call him good. Fred. I'm what very glad world? that they moved off from Fred to Freddy as a general thing, and they kind of laid off the Fred Krueger part. <laughs> Fred Frederick um, Krueger. Frederick Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so and glad we were on that. That has together. something to do with the first fun thing that I have for us. Uh, but... Anyway, the spoiler summary. Uh, everyone starts having bad dreams, and we get to meet our what feels like the main character, Tina. And she's talking about stuff, and everyone's there to support Tina, yada, yada, yada. Then Tina freaking dies after boning Rod um, in one For of the coolest For several hours, kills. apparently. Yeah, it was a very long, very obnoxious. Poor Johnny session. Depp. It was so loud. I was, was like that Johnny. I'm sorry. It, sex doesn't sound like that. It was very vocal sex. That I you think could there hear was something the wrong with Rod. Honestly, <laughs> she, she he shouldn't have been making those sounds. He, was, I don't think he's okay. <laughs> so yeah, Tina dies. Everyone thinks it's Rod, and then Rod gets arrested. Um. And then Rod dies, and then Johnny Depp dies, and we get a final showdown with Nancy versus Freddy as just everything starts to crumble around her, and no one, like, her parents are like, they know about Freddy, but they're trying to, like, act like it's not a thing. So, you know, you have her estranged parents with her dad pouring himself into work and her mom drinking herself into oblivion. Uh, which, Jeff, I'm pretty sure you have some stuff to talk about with that, right? Uh, I was going to talk about other stuff relating to the parents, actually. I was going to skip over that a little bit. Though the, oh, the mother's drinking habit is comical. Mm -hmm. No, it's like she's got her morning vodka. She's got her linen closet vodka. She's, she's got, got her, her bedtime bed vodka. vodka. Yeah. She's honestly, she's actually, strapped was that vodka. vodka. It looked like a frosted bottle, which made me think that it was like a coconut rum or something, which is a weird choice for this. It could be a, a whipped cream of, vodka. A lot of vodkas vodka. have a frosted bottle. Okay. I don't I know why it is that frosted vodka. glass on a bottle makes me think coconut rum. Um, I mean, no, you're not bad. wrong. It just does. Um, <laughs> that was a very bare bones summary, dude. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. There's so, like, I'm just trying to summarize things, so it's like it's we're hitting the big points. Enough. We're at yeah, the point now where people should have watched the movie before listening. So <laughs> if you haven't done well, that. Well, especially Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> yeah, the movie is what? We're closing in on 40 years old yeah. soon. So yeah, I it's a very worthwhile movie. I think a more detailed synopsis would be nice. But like, like a lot of them are, we're trying to start off with ones that are available to watch for free. Um, I would like to start off with some comments, but you have trivia, so go ahead. Okay. So I'm sure you guys might have seen floating around Facebook the uh, the gravestone that says Frederick Krueger, and it has a uh, a big explanation underneath it is like this is the grave of Frederick Freddy Krueger. He was uh, a janitor in Pennsylvania 
blah, 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 blah. And it gives a whole rundown of how he killed people, yada, yada, yada. And that he was the inspiration for Freddy Krueger of Nightmare on Elm Street because he killed people with a knife glove and all this stuff. That's fake, That's, right? It is 100% fake. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know why people spread that story. Because the real story is actually a million times more frightening. There's a real story. There is a real story behind this. Oh, no. So, I don't remember what part of Asia people were coming here to escape a war from. Oh, shoot. I do know this one. I think it's Taiwan. Because, or Thailand. But I can't remember, so we're not going to specify. But... Groups of people were taken from concentration camps in Asia and brought over here and separated and sent out into other cities to settle. Now, the problem with this is that these groups of people had their various, like, religious leaders that they looked up to and got support from. And now here they are, uprooted from their home in a new country, separated. People aren't treating them too nice because everyone's like, yeah, um, Vietnam and you know hawaii maybe you remember that and it's like that's not even the right people calm down everyone but you know america be racist so these people are having an awful time in america so what ends up happening is without having a um without having religious leaders to help them and like keep things chill some of them started having incredibly terrible nightmares and they thought they were being attacked by uh, demons that their leaders used to, like, help calm their minds about and keep away and things like that. So there was not one. There were not two. Not three. But four cases, at least, of people dying in their sleep of nightmares. Wow. Whoa. It gets better. Because I'm sure you noticed the absolute comical amount of... Of coffee and caffeine in Nancy's room. Yeah. You know, and her mess. mom taking away a half full coffee. <laughs> yeah, totally not meth. Um, her mom taking away like that half full coffee pot and then her bringing out a full, a full coffee maker from her bedside table that was on and running. You know, like that was real. That actually happened. These kids were being prescribed sleeping meds and then they instead of taking them, they just threw them away. Specifically, in one case, there was a man who did not sleep for days. He had coffee in his room. He was drinking coffee constantly. He was taking caffeine supplements. He was trying to do everything he could to stay awake. Until one night, he fell asleep while watching a movie. And his family's just like, or watching TV or something. And his family's just like, okay, cool. Thank goodness. He's finally asleep. They put him in bed. Next thing they know, he's just screaming. And they enter the room and they find him dead of a heart attack. Oh, wow. Now, um, heart attack, you're probably thinking like, oh my gosh, duh, he had so much caffeine and stuff. But like, that's not the takeaway here. The takeaway is that it's not just happened to him. This was something that like multiple people reported that they thought a shadowy figure in their dreams was trying to kill them. And then it did. And Wes Craven heard about this in the newspaper and he's like, oh my gosh, this is dead terrifying. I'm going to make a movie about it. Hell yeah. And did here they, we are with A Nightmare on Elm Street. Did they all also live on Elm Street? Uh, they did not, unfortunately. That was one of Wes's, we'll call it, creative embellishments, he added. <laughs> You'll note they're all white people as well, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I wanted to get that one out there because that's something that I see shared around a lot. And honestly... Pretending Freddy Krueger was a real person, whatever. But, like, there is an actual real terrifying story that this was based on. And I think that that's far scarier than just pretending Freddy Krueger was a real guy. Yeah. Oh, Personal absolutely. opinion. Yeah. That's, that, it's way better. I have, I have a lot of feelings about, like, movies that have, like, deep, deeper, like, backstories to, like, what they ended up being. Um so that's really cool to know. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing. The really yeah, interesting thing, though, is I think I, I want to know what Wes Craven's thought process was getting from shadowy figure kill you in your dreams to guy in a weird hat and a dirty sweater in ugly striped I colors. I have info about that, too, actually. How did get from there to, Wait, okay. Before you give me official info, can I give a theory? 
do yes. it. Yes. It's Go. because he knew this would be like a slasher ish movie, and all slashers have to be like very iconic, recognizable, very like striking vis- visages. Partially. Um, and so rather than just having a simple shadowy figure, which honestly. I think he could accomplish that scene, with the claw by itself, though, right? In the first scene, uh, Freddy was, like, just shadows. Yeah, that's uh, true. For, like, a good bit. Um, but no, I think he needed more if he really wanted, like, an impact. So here's here's the great part. You actually tied two of my points together. Ooh. So um, Freddy had to be an iconic person. Firstly, firstly, the name came from a kid who bullied Wes Craven in high school. <laughs> there was this kid named Fred, and he hated him. Roasted. Um, <laughs> So that's funny. But to give context of when this movie came out, um, we had four Friday movies, three Halloweens, My Bloody Valentine, Prom Night, and The Prowler had come out. Um, The slasher, like, we had very, very firmly cemented what slashers were at that point. And we were just kind of, we were just kind of rolling. We also, we had other ones that came like pre-Halloween, but since we're mostly talking about Halloween and Friday and Nightmare, I figured I'd keep within that time frame. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, so like we knew we knew what was going on. Um, and then we have Freddy Krueger. Now, the hat came from a time when Wes was a kid and there was this like drunk homeless man across the street wearing a fedora. That bullied who, him. Yeah. No, he, um, <laughs> he looked over at him and just kept really scary eye contact with him mm. one night. And he didn't know, like, he was kind of hiding, and he didn't know how the guy knew where he was, but he, like, scared the crap out of him. Stuck with him for a long time. Huh. And the green and red sweater comes from, scientifically, he had just learned that green, that, like, green and red were very difficult for the human eye to differentiate the colors. So his thought was, all right, I'm just going to make him hard to look at. (laughs) Oh. Uh, and that's where the iconic sweater came from. That's, he succeeded. That's pretty Do you have cool. any information on the inspiration behind the claw? Um, he wanted it to look like a weapon. He wanted an iconic weapon. He wanted something that looked like you could make it yourself and that he did make it himself. Okay. So they actually had cheap steak knives from a uh, department store. Nice. That they welded onto the copper pipes and crimped onto the leather glove. Nice, nice. So, like, him I, making it at the beginning of the movie is almost exactly how they made the knife. And I the very first thing that happened with it is Robert England cut himself. Oof. That yep. tracks. He also did Mood. cocaine off of the claws eventually during the making of one of the sequels. Good nice. for him. With Why would Dawkin. you expose him like that? With Dawkin? That does not surprise me. Doesn't surprise me either. Right? <laughs> I love that his image is just put together out of things that scared Wes Craven. I like that a lot. Me too. I love yeah, when helps filmmakers everything come do together that kind nicely. of stuff. We'll talk about that more whenever we cover uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is a fantastic movie. I'm very excited. Because there's a lot of that in the uh, the design of that movie. Whenever we get to it, I don't know when that's going to be. Well, I have uh, one last big Freddy Krueger specific trivia. Okay. Hit it. Um, and then we can move on to talking about this movie. He didn't know who he wanted at first. Uh, So he's, like, looking at all the things he wants Freddy to do, and he's like, well, I probably want a stuntman. And I want someone big and scary looking. Kane Hodder was one of the thoughts for Freddy Krueger. Are you kidding me? 100% honest. He was thinking about having Kane Hodder be Freddy. Can you imagine the the world we could be living in right now if Freddy was Jason? Oh, man. Yep, there it is. I was going to say, um... For people that don't know, Kane Hodder is not the most prolific Jason, but he is one of the most iconic Jasons. He's kind of the fan um, favorite. He is the fan favorite Jason. Um, what was he in? He was like from seven on. Or he was, was the one in Jason on? Takes Manhattan. I know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Kane Hodder brings just an absolute attitude to Jason that is unmatched in many people's opinions. More importantly, Kane Hodder is a thumb of a man. He is as wide as he is tall, and half of that is his neck. His neck he's is a very, massive. He's just a scary dude to look at. He is. <laughs> Apparently, he's a nice guy, though. I've heard, yeah. I've heard so many stories of him just being a really times. cool dude. 
One mm-hmm. of my favorite Noah-isms is when he calls a dude with a thick neck a thumb. This is kind of an ongoing thing, <laughs> and it I'm, cracks me up every time. Okay, so I'm just, for Nina, I'm Defend pulling yourself. up a picture I, of Kane I Hodder. I've seen Kane Hodder. And I, I just, know what he looks like. Are you going to tell me that he's Kane no, Hodder doesn't look like no a thumb? He's no Danzig, but he does look like a thumb. Danzig's a thumb. Corpse Grinder's a thumb. Kane oh, Hodder's Danzig a little bit too? of a thumb. Does Danzig yeah. have a thick neck? Oh, man. He does. <laughs> I've never looked at him that closely. <laughs> anyway, let's stop talking about thick-necked men. Noah, no, it's fact. 2020. Just call them thick. <laughs> okay. They're very thick men. Call them thick viscous. Boys. I'm not calling them viscous. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's uh, – he didn't really – his initial thought when he saw Robert England was – that he might be just too small for the role. But really? Robert England, being a classically trained actor, had come in and rubbed cigarette ash under his eyes to make himself look, like, tired and, like, drawn. Huh? And he just sat there and stared at Wes Craven for a good portion <laughs> of their interview. Which and reminded him of the creepy homeless man. And yeah, he was following the formula. I've got to get him. <laughs> uh, but he he read through the script he, they talked about the character they did their little thing and as he left he's like I love this I can't wait to get into this more mm. and Wes Craven was immediately sold on Robert England as Freddy huh. well there you go nice how about that That's a fun pro tip story. to any auditioning actors out there stare aggressively at your uh director to be and they will maintain have to pick eye you. contact to assert your dominance, assert dominance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you got to assert that dominance uh, but alpha. yeah that's that's pretty much um i don't want to monopolize this entire episode and i know i've done that a great deal already that's your job um, all very fun facts, so uh i have more facts but i'll let them come in if they pop up and I'll just talk about it with you guys after because I want I want you guys to talk. Okay. Let's hear let's hear your thoughts about this movie. <laughs> Silence. Nothing. Okay. I cool. want to talk about the ending. Oh, oh do we I have to start by talking about the ending. Let's start at the let's end. Let's start at okay. the end. Because I was going to say this movie's got some up. problems that I want to bring up, but yeah, that's uh, kind of one of them. So honestly, yep. this is a fun movie to watch. I enjoyed watching it. It was a good mm-hmm. time. Um, the concept is very original, like Killer That Haunts You in Your Dreams. I think that's a really cool concept, and I think they played it off well. Um, I was, like, if if this movie had ended the way I thought it was going to end, and the way it kind of, like, psychs us out, thinking that we're th- it's going to end one way, um... I think I would have given it, like, maybe a six and a half or a seven. Um, Okay. Because I think it's just incredibly corny where uh, What's-Her-Face is having her final standoff with Freddy, and she's just like, I don't believe in you anymore. This is a dream. And then he disappears and fades away. I'm like, if it would have stuck with that, and then she's like, I want my mom and my friends back and then they're all back and i think that would have been really corny and i would have hated it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah but that was the west craven's kind of original like, ending west I'm craven's glad somebody dummy. made him change it because it's bad yeah mm-hmm. i like that um instead they kind of have you think like that's the direction it's gonna go but then it's just freddy fucking with you and, and like, I like the actually... way that they reveal that kind of sequentially. It's like just the, the top pops up on the convertible and you see the stripes and you're like, oh, no. But then they don't show you Freddy right away. They give you another few seconds of the scene where you know what's about to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. I liked that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I thought that was really cool. I really liked that ending. And then Freddy like pulls in the mom um, into the house from the window And that was pretty neat. Uh, And it just kind of like, in the same way with Halloween where, like, Michael is defeated, but then you look out the window and he's gone. Um, It's this kind of end of, like, you can't defeat this evil sort of thing. And it's a callback, or not a callback, but 
it's a call to like more is going to come uh and this thing is still out there like Mm -hmm. and i just i think that's a fun ending to kind of like leave things on of not like end a movie or a book or anything with kind of a tidy little ending but just a kind of dreary ending of like oh everybody's dead (laughs) or um or like the protagonists were able to escape but like this thing is still out there and still causing problems Uh, i just like those kinds of endings Mm -hmm. yeah that ending is thanks to producer bob shea um because he's like no, we got to set it up for a sequel. All these scary movies, they have a cliffhanger at the end. You know, you got to have a twist. You got to do something. And freaking Wes Craven was like, no, we're just going to have it end. And you just can decide whether or not it's a real ending or not. And he's like, no. So they did that. <laughs> and it was his original plan was to have Freddy driving the convertible. She gets in and then Freddy's just like, ha, 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 and drives away. Mood. I would have um, been cool with that, too. That would have been me. Yeah, I'm glad he didn't do that because that sounds unforgivably campy. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very in line with Freddy in later movies. In fact, I believe they reused that concept at one point with him driving a bus. Nice. Um, <laughs> does he hit somebody with it? No, I think oh. he drives off a cliff. Disappoint. <laughs> I don't remember. It was. I think it was like the fifth or sixth movie. The, they were. They got pretty bad. Um, by then, so like I don't fully remember. <laughs> Valid. At one point, uh, Freddy uses a power glove, the Nintendo Power Glove, and says, "Now I'm playing with power." <laughs> <laughs> While he controls a video game version of himself, I think that was just an ad for the Power Glove. No, Nintendo was very unhappy. <laughs> Were they? That's yes. So oh, yeah. funny. Oh, Nintendo. Oh, I feel like we could get in trouble for just saying your name in a podcast. <laughs> it, almost, right? <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's the ending. Huh. Um, Neat. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I like about this movie before I start talking about things that I don't like. Go for okay. it. The effects look so good. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. The the um the attempted tub kill, I love the way that's shot. Oh, it's so good. Um the sticky staircase when she's like running up the stairs to get oh, away from Freddy so cool. and her oh feet keep sinking into the carpet. I love the way that looks. I have no idea how they did that. Oh man. Me neither. I love the way they show dream logic in film because mm-hmm. so many films try to like do dream sequences or kind of capture how like weird things right. are when you're dreaming and i think that this movie catch captures a lot of things that are just like they do, dreams don't be making yeah sense, it's just man. like sometimes you're just trying to walk up the stairs and things go wrong and you're not sure how oh yeah i, I think like this that. probably has the best this this movie not the franchise but this movie has the best execution of dream logic i think i've ever seen in a movie with that said, I don't like the aesthetics of a lot of the dreams because I, I feel like they they mimic all their real-life stuff just, a, you know, too closely by being the exact same stuff. I mean, Because, like, you know, when you have a, a dream door in about her being basement in your that own led home, it's house. not actually the way that your actual house looks. That's fair. You know, it's you know that that's the place yeah. that you're at. Maybe there's a lot of shared elements, but it's never exactly it. I know, but it's and that's hard to that's show nitpicky. That in a film it's nitpicky. You're like trying, it's you're trying specifically it was, it to fool the audience into low not budget. knowing what's a dream yeah. and what's not. That being said, uh, I could tell every every time that they went into a dream, it's pretty obvious. It's the fog. Once it's, you know what to look for, yeah. The fog. It's like the sh- like the classroom one specifically for me was like sh- I, the moment that they showed her in class and like i was like okay so we're gonna do a, a dream sequence like in class like it's- I, I loved how pretentious and booming her classmate got as soon as she fell asleep and he got like <laughs> somehow more monotone but more expression filled at the same time yeah like just way too into it <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that was that was neat also, I I pointed this out to Noah, like not to not to interrupt you as Jeff, but I'll I'll finish this and I'll let you go back to it. But no, um, I pointed out to Noah during the classroom scene, like Halloween had a classroom scene, but it had nothing to do with like the overall movie. This 
to me, I it might be one of the first movies that does the whole we are in class talking about what the movie is about thing that happens in so many other like it, horror movies specifically, but movies in general. That was where it's a- just. Like, how does the whole world know what's going on right now? <laughs> it was a, a large talking point that I was about to start moving toward, actually. Um, oh. I mean, one brief little thing. The teacher in that scene is Lynn Shea, whom we yeah, may remember is. from Insidious. So that's mm-hmm. neat. I was wondering where I recognized her from. It's yeah. because her brother is Bob Shea, who we were just talking about as the producer. Yep. Yep. Shea is Bay. So um, the the classroom scene is obviously made to be kind of reminiscent of the classroom scene from Halloween, right? And mm, anytime that you're watching a movie assumption. and they start like reciting bits of Shakespeare or making reference to it or whatever, you you basically know that that means that it's thematically something to do with what's going on in the movie. So mm. I looked into that a little bit. Uh, oh, look at Jeff doing research. And yeah, I, I mean, I didn't find a ton. Other people have noticed. Uh, uh, other people have like written stuff about it, and I didn't get real into it. I read a Spark Notes version of Hamlet and uh, got very little out of it. So I like, read. Mood. Uh, <laughs> so I just context, read. A, I love Shakespeare, so that's very. A page me. also on Spark Notes. There was just a, you know, just a, a, a listing and an exploration of the themes. And uh, I mean, so we kind of get the idea from the the quote that the guy is reading, where he says, uh, "Well, I mean, at first, where the teacher is saying that Shakespeare was saying there was something rotten in nature or something rotten in human nature." Which I think mm-hmm. definitely plays into, you know, Freddy's existence and then the, the parents killing him and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the, uh, the, the one classmate who says the, I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have bad dreams, that quote. So as he was reading that, I was mm-hmm. like, well, okay, I guess I can't ignore this. So then I'm, that was when I started Googling things, and I didn't pay very close attention to a lot of the rest of the movie. But that's okay, <laughs> because I think the third act drags a little bit anyway. Um, it, it do start to. So in the themes page from Spark Notes, um, one of the things that it says is, uh, the play poses many questions that other plays would simply take for granted, such as, can we have certain knowledge about ghosts? Is the ghost what it appears to be, or is it merely a misleading fiend? Does the ghost have reliable knowledge about its own death, or is the ghost itself deluded? And to move to more earthly matters, how can we know for certain the facts about a crime that has no witnesses? Hmm. Okay. Which I found pretty relevant to this movie, because I have always disliked Freddy, because he's a revenge ghost. But what's he getting revenge for? He's getting revenge for the fact that somebody got revenge on him for the fact that he was just <laughs> fucking killing children for no reason. Yeah, no, he has He's no got nothing to be angry about. <laughs> I hate mm-hmm. that. That's a big part of the reason I don't like Freddy as a villain. I just feel like he doesn't have enough reason to exist. You know? And in I... watching the intro to this movie uh for this uh for, for the podcast, I kind of just in seeing the, you know, the glove ma- making scene in the in the intro, I started thinking, like, if this movie were about Freddy in life, it would be so much scarier. Because I think the concept of a man who is just killing children for no reason and who would think to make a knife finger glove as his killing tool like that by itself is I think actually scarier than the guy that comes at you in your dreams because I know that a guy who comes at me in my dreams isn't real but a man who just likes killing children with a, a homemade knife glove is absolutely horrifying mm-hmm. in a lot of far more real ways you know so I have a couple things to add to that if you don't mind yeah if you're if you're ready for it um Personally, uh, I think if you combine a man 
who is targeting some of the most vulnerable people in society and is so dedicated to targeting those people that he just won't stay dead. He's just so pissed that his conquest to be evil was stopped that he just won't stop doing it. Um, And then you combine that with the more fun concept of someone who stalks your dreams which is like obviously the main concept it's like who are you gonna have this is this is my thing that makes him a good villain for me is that who are you gonna have stalk someone in your dreams demons are just way too predictable i think it's way more terrifying to have just a really evil human who was just so evil he persisted in the afterlife and doing evil be your villain in that concept so I think if you work from the premise of someone killing in dreams to just an evil human, it's more scary than if you than if you like are like, oh, he's an evil human, but he's killing in dreams. And if you think yeah. of like who you would have killing people in dreams, I think an evil human is maybe the scariest you could go with. But that's that's where I'm coming from. Fair. Yeah, this yeah. this kind of kind of changed it for me though. It's just reading that, um, you know, is the ghost deluded about the circumstances of its own death? Like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. tacked on an extra layer of like, you know, maybe due to whatever it is that happens when you die, Freddy is actually convinced that he's been wronged somehow. Mm. Maybe he is a different creature in death than he was in life, and it's not just about killing children for the sake of killing children anymore that's why he's targeting teens now i don't know that might be nothing in terms of the actual movie but it was something for me no i like that though i think that's uh i think that's a decent take i don't know that i would like a movie about freddy as a person as much oh no it'd be like texas chainsaw it'd be hard to watch yeah yeah i think he'd be a much more impactful villain to me personally though in that kind of a a situation that's fair well, I was going to say that they touch on that in the sixth movie, but they also make it really awful and you're angry that they answered that question. So mm. I would say don't, <laughs> if that's the specific thing you're after, please don't look that one up. <laughs> I'm not saying I would enjoy it. Like I said, I'm, I'm just saying it would make him scary to me. Mm. I have never watched any of the sequels and I, I don't know. I don't know. The second one is very worth watching. The third and fourth are pretty good. The fifth is weird, the sixth is bad, and the seventh is fantastic. And then and you have then Freddy vs. Jason. There's Freddy vs. Jason, which I feel like is just like the a distillation of both of those characters. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, no, we're not talking about that movie. We're I'm not, not talking about it right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> so let me see. Let me see. I have a few things from the movie in general that I want to bring up. If Emma, do you have anything else you would like to talk about first? Um. I really want to talk about the man I've come to know and love, um, Freddy Longarms Kruger. I love Freddy Longarms Kruger. Longarm Freddy is prime Freddy, really. In the beginning of the movie, uh, it starts off with him kind of hunting a person, like, in their dreams. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, running away and everything. Um, And there's a part where she's in an alleyway. And there's a sheep. and, And there's a sheep. But then she looks down the alleyway and Freddy's there. Yeah. <laughs> and it has this, like, shot of him in the alley and his arms are super fucking long. <laughs> 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 it looks so bad, but so amazing. <laughs> and I loved it so, so much. That's what I'm talking about when I say chaotic energies. It's just like... <laughs> I just, Long Arm <laughs> Freddy is so good. He's like, he literally is making the most of living in a dream world. He just does whatever he wants, and it's so funny to me. Like, also, seriously, go ahead. Yeah, like, along that thought process, why did he always, like, cut himself open or chop off his fingers? That was something that I was starting to wonder about. Like, why is Freddy so into self mutilation? Well, he's yeah, going I, after like, these kids. I mean, he's a little masochistic, but I think more of it boils down to him relishing being the nightmare. I think yeah. that's what a lot of it ends up boiling down to. Right, because he could have killed all like, these kids yeah, yeah, way yeah. faster. It could have been like a 20-minute short if he would have just worked a little more efficiently, but that's not what he's after. He wants them to be scared. 
Yeah, that mm-hmm. was kind of my big question because that was my big thing sticking out in this movie of feeling really kind of corny and weird. Yeah. Is just that aspect of him feels forced almost. And yeah, I'm just kind of like, what what was the creative decision there? Like, what was like, what were they thinking when they wanted to do that? It feels Which like there are a lot of other scary that, things that but... he could do, right? Yeah. But no, um, he's always just like, hey, check this out. I got pus and maggots in I think he probably, my, I, my personal <laughs> theory is that he thinks it's super entertaining. Like, he's just jazzed that he can do it. So he's actually, like, really thrilled to, like, make other people watch. He's like, check this <laughs> out. Can't even feel it. Bop! <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me of this guy it. I knew um, who had a titanium plate in his shin. His party trick was to hit it with things. He'd be like, I can't even feel it. And it's getting like bruised and bloody. And he's just like smacking it with a stick. He's yeah, like, can't no. feel a thing. That's 100% that's Freddy, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah, he was a weird dude. Sense. He was a weird dude. He was a weird dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Nina. I saw him uh, this summer. Me? He's what? still a weird dude. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> you I'm sorry saw to hear Freddy that, Krueger? Uh, <laughs> Freddy Krueger has kids? Not Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Um, party trick. Oh, Titanium party trick. shin party We're gonna trick. We're going to call him party trick from now on. How's party he still have He's that? got what, like three kids now? Uh, as far as I know, only two. Okay. They're both like five, though. Yeah. All right, so He's I want to talk about... still exactly the way you remember him, though. It, Which sucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but since since Emma started talking about Tina... Uh, and long arm, <laughs> stretch Armstrong, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to talk about Tina dying. Yeah, the way she was really kind of shot as like the main the character girl. up until that point, and then suddenly she gets killed, and you're like, "Well, what am I here for?" I think Nancy. there was some she's awesome. Friday the Thirteenth influence there. That that's I guess that's a possibility. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I want to talk about the rotating room and how she got dragged all across the room. That was so cool. Uh, you want to know how they did that? I would love to. Everything was nailed down. All the sheets were starched to death. Rod was tied to the floors oh and his God. hair was starched in place so he couldn't move. What? The cameras were bolted down and everyone in the room rotated. That's the and it was power just... the whole room. Big, heavily reinforced box that got rotated by hand. And they just spun the room around. They used it again for Johnny Depp later. Yeah, but, I, was, um, I like hardcore, like, with a Johnny Depp kill. I was like, okay, like, this room is definitely 100% upside down. And I get that. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, I didn't think about it with Tina. What's yep, name? Tina. Yeah, and they Tina they do it so well, well by keeping they keep Rod, Rod in the, in the shot foreground. The time. Yeah, he's in the foreground and he doesn't look like he's moving, and you're just like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? Yeah, it's incredible. It's fantastic. It's such a good shot, and, and I think it's a better rotating room sequence than the one that we see a few years later in Poltergeist. Yeah, I would agree. It I would feels agree. more dangerous. It feels a lot more real. Mm-hmm. It does. Well, it's because you just have Tina getting dragged around the room, yeah. which. By the way, could not be happier. Freddy is not in that shot. Oh, I would yeah. not have been afraid if I saw Freddy dragging her around and stabbing her. It's That's better like, okay, him, yeah. This they is just what it's like. They do a good job in this movie of knowing when and when not to show you Freddy and how much of Freddy to show you at a given time. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. do really oh, well so at like slowing down the reveal. Because like if we were to have this movie made like now, I know that there's a remake. I haven't seen the remake. So maybe they did this. this. Is, I this hope is they did. What I did with Friday okay. the Thirteenth. But if they were to do this, I am concerned that they would be so caught up on CG, which I know they did do in the yeah. remake with the uh, with the spandex wall. Spandex, by the way, also not with Freddy's entire face. Apparently, uh, oh. he wasn't like CG. He was CGI in the new one. No, he's not. But he was actually modeled after burn victims. Ooh. Whereas your classic Freddy is an amalgamation of face wounds that are also partially burns. Yeah. But they're not burn scars. Yeah, burn like actual burn victim Freddy Krueger. I'm looking at him and I it I I do not find him as um He's not fun. 
No, he just... It doesn't sound like he'd be uh, as expressive. No, nowhere near as expressive. No, he's not. Um, But I would worry that they would try to do some fun CGI tricks of actually having Freddy, like, crawl around like some weird spider or something and drag Mm -hmm. her around. I'm worried that they would try and do something like that. Whereas with this movie, they did a slow rotating room and just dragged Tina across it. And I'm like, yeah. The suspense, it like for such a slow shot, her screams and her acting is so good with how she's like, she kills Rod it. In that for scene, help. Yeah. She absolutely oh my gosh, kills it. And then they just drop her onto the bed and it's just like, done. And I love that. Dead. I that wish so that cool. they would have done one thing differently with that shot, though. What's that? I wish they would have put more blood in the bed prior to that shot. They did. For the rest of the scene. They did. But they then got they drop axed. her and it's like, oh, suddenly the entire bed is just completely red, whereas it was mostly still white before. Oh, All right. okay, okay. Never if mind. They, I if thought they you were talking just... about you wanted a bigger splash. No, I love the splash. I just okay. wish that they had done more, like, I don't know, just show... Like, as she gets cut up more, just show her blood, like, dripping down onto the I sheets, agreed with that. Kind of. I mm-hmm. When I saw her, like, smearing the blood across the top, it was clear that the blood was, they were running out of blood. Like, it yeah. was drying out. So, I had the same feeling. They had to budget mm. their blood for other scenes. <laughs> yeah, for the, other scene. the 220 gallons they dumped out of freaking Johnny Depp's bed. Johnny was so full of blood. <laughs> <laughs> he was just a bloody boy. Yo, you can't even keep 220 gallons of blood in the human body. Yeah, no. If you're a coward, you can't. <laughs> it was that horny teenager blood. It's true. It Ew. was. Horny that teenager blood. Ew. <laughs> anyway, so funny thing about the Johnny Depp kill. Um, the blood, they obviously, they just dumped it into an upside down room. Very easy to manage. Um, but it was so heavy. And it splashed everywhere. Crew members got shocked because it hit lights and shorted out some power. Oh, and no. that's why the room started to slosh to the side and gave you that really weird angle drip mm, that looks so I saw cool. that. I was wondering about that's that. That's because oh. crew members got shocked and the things started slipping because they couldn't hold it in place. Oh, my God. I hope they're okay. Oh. Um, they are. No one died. Okay, cool, cool. I can't, I can't definitively say that they're fine, but no one died. As far as we know, they're all right. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of the shots in this movie were like that. Actually, oh, they uh, the sex doll of... scene included. They only had one sex doll, and they had to get it right. Yeah, no, Bob Shea said that they could only take one shot of pulling her through that window. You're not kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh my god, he I said, was 100 percent joking. They drove away, and he's like, "You could have one shot at doing this." So they had Freddie reach out and grab her, and they're like, "Swoop!" And they're like, "All right, cool. That's a wrap." It that shows. explains a lot. It, it does show. It definitely. It shows. looks better than it could. But it also doesn't look good it at all. It looks so funny. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, can, can I do a little segment that we're going to hear more of in the future called Nina Loves Strong Female Leads in Horror? Yeah. Um, because I'd like to talk about Nancy for a hot second here. Uh, she, I love her as a character. The moment that there are certain characters in horror that are women that by the time, I don't know why it's always women. Cause I like men in horror too. Like I love Chris and get out and other characters as well. But like specifically with a lot of women in horror, I like, maybe it's cause we get so little of them in other genres. I start looking for fan art immediately while the movie's <laughs> still going. And Nancy was one of those characters when she gets the gray stripe in her hair because of how like scared she is and it like preemptively ages her. I was like, that's just such a cool character design thing for one. Um, I love how she asks for help from people and has these good plans. The Home Alone traps notwithstanding because that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, what you reading there? Oh, booby improvised traps. booby traps. What's with that? I'm just into, what, survival? <laughs> but she's like, she's smart. She thinks ahead. She realizes that Freddy's going to go for Rod. She trusts Rod. She uh, stands up to her dad, who's a cop, which was something that, like, in Halloween, obviously, we had, like, oh, my dad's a cop. I'm going to smoke weed in front of him, which is a very different kind of thing, whereas Nancy's, like, out here, like, uh, no, you cannot shoot my friend. What the heck, dad? Um... I don't know. I just really enjoyed Nancy as a character. I think out of the, like, she actually felt 
like a person who was making realistic decisions in the heat of the moment yeah. and the very sleep deprived heat of the moment. I actually think it's really interesting also that asking for help is not her first line of thought. Mm-hmm. She starts mm-hmm. researching the booby traps and stuff before she ever asks Glenn to help. Mm-hmm. And she only actually asks him when she gets desperate. Like her first I mean, she... move is just to deal with it by herself. She did ask him. She's like, hey, I need you to make sure that you don't fall asleep and wake me up if anything weird happens. And then he flunked that real hard. It takes a little while to get to that point, though. She does other things first, doesn't she? No, that was the first thing. That was when Rod died. Uh, Rod Lane, a musician type. That's when he died. musician type. That's him. I I love that when they're like, her boyfriend, Rod Lane, a musician type. It's like, (laughs) what is that? (laughs) Meanwhile, this dude is such a freaking greaser. He looks like he just walked right out of the Outsiders. He looks, Honestly, he and does. He says That's what your like, father-in-law thinks you look like. Up yours with a twirling like. lawnmower? What in the world? Yeah, no, I have that, that written down too. Up yours with a twirling lawnmower is like such a weird, it's like, dated slang that well, doesn't sound real. Because I don't think the, it is. This is around the same era as Heather's with, uh, you're going to have to believe this one because it swears. Um, but like in Heather's, which is another, not horror, but it's a really fun like kind of a movie. She Great says, musical. She says, f*** me gently with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite Mayhem song. What yeah. part of that do I need to bloop? Um, the chainsaw. The whole, you can the say. chainsaw. You can't say the that. Chainsaw. This is a family show. You know we pack a chainsaw, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I think that's just, I think that's like a, a thing I almost feel like where they just came up with the most creative insults they could. Yep, yeah, yours with a twirling lawnmower. Uh, one I'm more Rod thing about Lane, Rod's musician greaserness. Type. Did you guys get a good look at his dad in the funeral scene? No, I, I wasn't paying attention to anything except for how he looks Nancy's like he's an Elvis blue impersonator, and he had a gig like ten minutes after the funeral. <laughs> See, he's I obviously was... very old, but he has the darkest jet black hair, and it's in that greaser pompadour. And I swear he is dressed like Elvis. Oh, God, there he is. <laughs> Noah looked up a picture. Uh... No, you know what he looks like. He looks like, oh my gosh, he looks like a Joe Pesci impersonator in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm really distracted by the fact that Nancy's wearing bright blue and everyone else is like wearing black. Yeah, that's not quite <laughs> that, right. That's yeah, what, that's what gets that. me. Oh, that's, oh, that's a like very Joe good Joe Pesci, shot. though. Oh, I, I did not get a look at his dad. I like how we don't actually have any confirmation that that is his dad, but like, come but on. But we look at him and come we on. know. <laughs> like, come look on. It's, it makes yeah. very much sense how his kid turned out like that. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Also, all of, the, all of the teenage characters look like they're teenagers except Rod. Yeah. Yeah, no, Rod, I don't think Rod is a teenager though, right? Like, he's I think so he, tall I think and he, he might looks be 20. Like, a, like a 20-year-old man. I think he's supposed to be older. He's definitely supposed to that be older than track. they are, but he is still in high school. So so he's maybe 19 if he got held back. Yeah. Um, Man, he looks... I just... I love when they catch him when he ran out in his blue jeans that look like scrubs and just <laughs> his leather jacket. And no shoes, no socks. He hasn't done no anything shirt. else yet. He still hasn't no put shirt, on a just shirt either. Leather jacket and pants. And he's just like... Nancy, you gotta believe me. I didn't kill Tina. And she's like, why should I believe you? And he's like, I, I said I didn't kill her. And that was like his whole proof. <laughs> yeah. But then she like, goes oh, on Rod. to defend him. And I don't understand why she defends him. She's got I no do, reason because to. Because she knew ahead of time that Nancy, that Tina was having the same dreams she was. And Tina had already told them about like her dream from the night before where she had, hadn't she already woken up with scratch marks on her arm at that point? Yeah. She yeah, had a so burn mark, I think. That was that was Nancy later with the burn mark. Tina had oh, gotten okay. scratched. Um yeah. and to me, like, if I were a high schooler who had been having these nightmares, I feel like I would believe that over, you know, this guy I trust. You know. Mm-hmm. So I, I see where she comes from. They don't seem to trust or even like Rod up until that point though. <laughs> Honestly, the part about Rod that rubs me the wrong way the most was when she tries to defend Rod and then her mom and um, I'm assuming a drunken stupor was just like, well, I'm sorry you don't think murder is very serious. <laughs> that was, that was so thing. terrible. The most mom like, thing the, that she could possibly doing? say, right? Poor Nancy. 
Nancy, she's so tra- I, like, I also Nancy's think here, they did trauma fight, well, really their well. Their fight wasn't that serious. And she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, her parents think, are the worst. <laughs> they try, think, but they're the worst. I think the worst part about Rod was the fact that he didn't know the word invisible. Um, yeah. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> so... So Nancy is in the prison talking to Rod about like, well, what happened? And so he's describing like the scene of like, like she was just like flying around getting scratched and stuff. And I, there was I somebody there and him. she was like, <laughs> and she was like, but you didn't see the person. And he was like, no, I couldn't see him. She's, she was like, but you saw them make scratch marks. And he's like, yeah. But it was like they weren't there. I'm like, the entire time I was just like, say that they were invisible. Were there, were there notes in like the writing room that was like, we can't use the word invisible. We, can't we gotta make Rod's sure everybody too understands stupid to Rod know that is word. really dumb. So he can't be clear about anything. Yeah. This movie's only 130. We gotta pad with. the runtime. <laughs> that's good enough. Um. Are, are, do we, are we ready for a new segment I like to call Nina Reads Some of Noah's Notes? Nina, you're getting an awful lot I of love... new segments. No, this was a new segment last time. So oh, that's this, right. This is an, an old, old segment, Nina segment now. Okay, we got, um, <laughs> starting off strong with Freddy flashing titty. I, I he mean... does. He did. He does that. He, he does, that. does do that. To reveal the, the pus within. He's just like, hey, look at this. And we're like, ew. Boom. And then he cuts it open and it's like, ew. <laughs> we've got um, we've got Noah personally offended by the fact that Nancy doesn't like warm milk. Warm milk's fine. Like her mom's like, don't fall asleep and drown in the tub. That happens all the time. And firstly, I've never heard of that in my life. So I've I'm going to call bullshit that. on that. I used, but I used like, to and... hear that all the time when I was a kid. Interesting. Really? Yeah. Hmm. All right. But then she's like, I made you some warm milk. And Nancy's just like, ah, warm milk? <laughs> and she's like, come No, thanks, Mom. I do meth now. <laughs> is, For a week warm, at a time. <laughs> is warm milk a thing? Yeah, I used to drink it when I had insomnia in college. Wait. I it's, thought, it's supposed I to help you fall asleep. For babies. No, no, no. no. It can you help warm it up so that it too. like activates the, the sleepy stuff in it so it helps you be tired. The science yeah. is iffy, but I found it comforting. Um, well, it helps a lot if you add a slug of alcohol matters. to it as well. We have this that's note that says... You put some brandy in there. I had some thoughts about this one as well. The dream doctor who just says, if you don't dream, you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, can't you just make it so I don't dream? That guy if has an awful dream, lot of very questionable go. statements in the way that he oh, yeah. evaluates things. No, that was the next note I made too. Is like, Do we honestly not know what dreams were in 1984? Like, sure, Wes Craven might not know what dreams were, but to, this to just sit there and have a doctor say, <laughs> we don't even know what dreams are. It's like, no, we we had to have known what dreams were by then, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, um, psychology yeah, I only started in the 30s, and I can only imagine, like, specific dream interpretation and dream study and REM sleep study. I don't think started until maybe like the 60s yeah i'm kind of so surprised that they even have something. the correct apparatus to try and measure brain waves well it was it was the institute for science so like they <laughs> they had <laughs> <laughs> they, they be no one uh, thing institute sounds like smart uh, people i they have a couple i just have like two more uh, science all your institutions i uh, need smart <laughs> stuff help me i couldn't um, get a look so, at them yeah, I have cool. a couple more. The first one is uh, Johnny Depp crop top, which like mood. Um, yeah, that's a good look on. What a look! Good look he on him. rocked that crop top. That's all I have to say for that. Um, and then this one just prompts me having uh, some more thoughts. It, his note just says, "Hell yeah, mom! Yell at the kid." But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, oh yeah, she was yelling at Johnny Depp. Yeah, I but remember here's that. The, here's my big thing. Johnny Depp's parents in this movie are dicks. Yeah, I hate them. To be fair, Johnny Depp looked at his mom and said, well, I'm watching Miss Nude America tonight. Which is apparently just on regular TV. What? Apparently. And she's like, well, how will you be able to hear what she has to say? And he's like, who cares what she has to say? 
And it's like, okay, that's why I wrote that note. But like, yeah, no, her his parents are not the greatest people. In that it's exact like, scene, though, I'm very confused by the fact that she finds him asleep in his bed and she says, you'd better get to bed. Like, she could have <laughs> just shut that? off his TV and his record player and left him there. And he was already asleep. she came asleep. and she's like, Glenn, what are you doing with this TV and your record player? You need to go to bed. As she startles him awake. Which yeah. I'm glad that I'm glad that she pointed that out because Noah had also pointed that out in his notes. So to have the mom come in and immediately be like, hey, dude, w- what are you doing? What are you <laughs> doing Nancy had a tiny now? TV in her room, too. Why don't we have a tiny TV in our room? Uh, because on your bed. we're better than that. <laughs> better. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think, anyway, that's, I think that's Johnny that Depp's segment. parents were annoying in the context of the movie because we mm-hmm. as the audience knew what was going on and that right. everything was real. And that they it's were literally killing their child. I think in child. the context of re- the real world, like they were acting reasonably. Yeah. They're like, Nancy ah, great, the crazy girl's son. calling again. Like... <laughs> I love gotta, that. Uh, well, she says she has to talk to him urgently, and he just takes the phone and she's like, call back tomorrow, hangs up. You just got to be firm with these kids. And he's like, and actually, and then he takes it off the receiver, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. We used to be was, able to do that. Wild. Yeah, that <laughs> now was I very, just like, 80s parent people. thinking. And, like, I get it, because I wouldn't want the phone ringing again. But if it, if if – and I get that, like, there are bars on her windows, but, dude – but also, why were they all like? Why were both parents awake at, at that time? Here, here's my thing. They knew that. Here, here's my big thing with them. They knew that Glenn was still awake because she had just talked to him. They knew that one of their mutual friends had just died. Two of their mutual friends had just died. Well, one of them was a musician type, and not to be he was okay. a musician so, type. So he was like, walking in. I don't understand if the kid's still awake and she's traumatized. Why not just let her talk for like a second before they go to bed? Like, well, they don't want to go in there. He's watching Miss Nude America. What do you think is going to happen when they I walk would, in there? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to walk in on my son watching Miss Nude America. Do you think that was him lying to just try and get his mom to leave him alone so that he oh, could absolutely. sneak out to visit Nancy? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> my mom won't come in here now. She's going to be too afraid of catching me jacking off. <laughs> <laughs> if they had Johnny walked Depp, in probably. on that it would have been a very different substance spilling out of his blood onto the f- ceilings what Ew. Uh, oh, ew. <laughs> <laughs> it no, still would have been the like 2,000 gallons or, or whatever yeah. 220 yeah. 200. 220 we're not gallons. talking a whole ton of blood here or other things <laughs> or other things <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's that's basically. I think um, two more two more Noah notes really quick. One is the priest is being an asshool. He was. <laughs> oh, I did spell that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> he was though. He was an being ass-hool. an asshool. Yeah, he's just like, uh, and you know, wild kids are trash. Those who live by the sword die by the yeah, sword, a... as the Bible teaches <laughs> us. And it's just like, dude, he just died. Well, here's the big <laughs> thing for me though is. Uh, in Catholicism, um, the priests always talk about how if you commit suicide, you go to hell at the funerals Before of people you die. who commit suicide. And as far as everybody knows, Rod killed himself. You know that's what? That's fair. Fair. So I thought the priest should have been a dick about that as well, because that's what happens yeah, that in real life. that would have been pretty accurate. Um, last Noah note is mom just gets drunker and drunker as the movie goes on. She, she does. really does. You just she watch really her fall do. apart. And I, <laughs> I did want to talk about the mom really quick. Yeah, there's a massive subtext in this movie about substance abuse between Nancy and her mom. Mm-hmm. I think that's really interesting. Um, I also think that there could, you know, I think it's more than you're intended to read into it about, like, you know, the cycle of uh, trauma and stuff between these parents and their kids oh no uh, i think that's i think that's intended you think yeah, that's the intended no, it's reading definitely intended. i okay. i have a, I a really... thing that i was gonna do actually you you oh. say your thing and i'll get into it no that was like uh i really i tied with the uh, substance abuse and how these parents in trying to spare their children this uh this damage have damaged themselves and that damage is pushing onto their children it's it's preventing them from actually being the parents that their their children need them to be and if they were had been able to deal with their own trauma and move on from 
Freddie getting off on on a technicality, maybe this wouldn't be happening now, and their kids would be healthier. So, totally, it's mm-hmm. an extension kind of of the uh, children being punished for the sins of their parents kind of theme, right? You know, the parents kill Freddy, so then Freddy starts killing their kids. Meanwhile, they are causing those problems by themselves by, you know, having all of their uh, substance abuse problems and passing them on to their children. Also, um, Nancy seems kind of aware of the fact that she inherits a lot of her problems from her mother because, I don't know if you noticed this, she always calls her dad, Daddy. A very mm-hmm. affectionate term. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. about half of the time, she refers to her mom as mother, even when referring, mm-hmm. even when talking directly to her, which is a lot more cold, a lot more distant. She really doesn't like her mom. She's got some very big problems with her. Yeah, you can tell. And, like, I have more problems personally, like, as an outsider with her dad, because her dad is... A cop. Way, he's... <laughs> Fuck <laughs> cops. <laughs> Anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, um, uh, but that that is a big part of it, obviously. I really, I don't like cops in horror movies, especially, because they always seem to add to problems um, in a very realistic manner, one might say. Yeah. But um, the, the, the big thing is that, like, he, they're both kind of dismissive of her, but, like, she her mom does try a lot to help nancy um she she takes her to the sleep clinic she gives her she tries to like oh i'll fix you a bath i'll i'll make you warm milk i'll do what i can to help meanwhile her dad's like this child is insane (laughs) (laughs) and i just i just i think that like looking at the differences there and like even the mom is the one to finally break down and tell her the truth like yeah. after everything because the dad's like me nah, fred don't even talk about freddy krueger uh. and the mom's like no you know what she deserves to know the truth especially with this all coming out maybe she's just like remembering things maybe i can finally put that to rest so i have a lot more sympathy for the mom personally than the dad because at least she took steps to help her daughter sure. and the dad was like uh, help my daughter. I have to investigate this very sus murder scene that definitely doesn't have anything to do with what my daughter's been talking about. Sorry, kid. Yeah. Her mom also went and jumped straight into breakfast vodka. So <laughs> I think she we do to need to clarify. To she didn't do a good job at she it. She did not. <laughs> but uh, she did try to hide it, yes. Uh, do you guys have any other topics you wanted to touch on? I do have a little. Please. Okay, go for it. So, I I have a lot of questions about the role of Catholicism in this movie. Uh, because the yeah. crucifix is mentioned as part of the jump rope rhyme. Mm-hmm. Five, six, grab a crucifix. But then, like, I don't and think it, it ever actually matters, does it? No, it does, because it stops him from coming out of the spandex wall. It does. But that's after she grabs it. Grabbing it is supposed to help. <laughs> um, but then, like, also, um, uh, during the one, the the one scene where, uh, what when Tina gets killed, she sees Freddy and she's like, "Oh my god!" And Freddy holds up the claw hand and he says, "This is God." Mm-hmm. What's that? What's that all about? What's going on here? Um, that yeah, and also there was a sheep that present about. in one of her earlier dreams, which has a lot of Christian connotations to it. I I guess I was looking the rest of the movie for that to come in a little bit more and to find more hints toward that, and Me I too. Yeah. didn't get any. I'm confused. Well, because when it when it first she first brought out the crucifix in the spandex scene, I asked Noah like, "Why would a crucifix do anything? He's not a demon; he's just a dude." Exactly. And this was one of the moments that I didn't want to say anything. Um, that there is nothing in this movie that it does. There's nothing in this movie that that applies to. It doesn't do anything here. They rationalize it, is it a, in a sequel, I gather. It is a theme they bring back in very heavily in numbers three and four. Maybe even five. I don't remember. But it becomes an actual part of the Freddy mythos that his mother was a nun. What? what? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a whole thing. 
That's stupid. Yeah, no, it's um, his mom's origin story or his origin story is stupider than you think it is. How? Um, I already think that it's that his mother was a nun. How could it get stupider than that? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to get into it on the podcast because I don't want to spoil a different movie. Okay. Uh, and that was enough of a spoiler as it is. <laughs> Maybe but, off off camera. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you off more. camera. Oh man, I wish Freddy's mom had been the villain in this movie instead, <laughs> so we could Freddy, learn about her. If you her. think if you think about the themes of parents passing trauma onto their kids, Freddy's Ooh. Freddy's mom was the villain in Freddy's this movie. Freddy's mom was the villain. Oh man, <laughs> dang it, Pamela Kruger. Why would you do this, <laughs> Pamela Kruger? Pamela Kruger. <laughs> she also right. wore sweaters. Well, where do you think Freddie got it from? Exactly. Probably Kmart. Sweater, sweater wearing villains. Uh, do we want to start wrapping up? Uh, yeah. yeah. One last thing. There's that one scene where Nancy is uh, drinking coffee and doing meth, and she's watching Evil Dead. There is later on a Nightmare on Elm Street reference in Evil Dead 2, and that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Oh, yeah. Electric Boogaloo. Exactly. Evil Dead 2. It is the most electric of all Boogaloos. I was gonna say, if any movie deserves Electric Boogaloo, I think it's Evil Dead Two. I'm actually gonna tweet Sam Raimi and ask him to add it. <laughs> Do it. What's the worst that could happen? Sam Raimi could you say get something mean about me Sam, on Twitter. Get, get blocked by Sam Raimi for you. Sam your... Raimi retweets you or quote retweets you saying, "This is worst the dumbest case, idea I still I've ever have a good heard in my story, life." Actually, <laughs> honestly, you know, that's fair. Thinking positive. So, yeah. Right. Uh, um, yeah, just that. And also, um, I cannot overemphasize, if Nancy really did stay awake for seven straight days just drinking coffee and doing meth the entire time, she should not be making any sense by the end of this movie. She should be no, hallucinating don't worry. left and don't right. Don't worry, Jeff. The record's 11. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, that you was start my hallucinating favorite after like three or four days. Come on now. Ex- also, she was not awake the whole time. She kept napping. She did keep napping. It might not have been a very satisfactory nap, but she slept many times over the course of these seven days. That's how we got all the cool sh- scenes. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, in, it is in fact baked into the plot that she did sleep several times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my last also, thing, though, is just as a, a person who pulled several all-nighters in high school, um, y- you wouldn't be doing that well by that point. She'd be attempting those booby traps, and they would kill her by accident. <laughs> See, I think the best part though is that she's out here talking about I haven't been up for so many days in the middle of Johnny Depp being like I used to turn to sleep for comfort, but now all I have left is comfort food. And she just bulldozes right past her boyfriend's like yeah. very legitimate relevant to her concerns. He keeps like trying to like, open up to her about his problems and she keeps just true. pushing right past it. And then in the very next scene, he'll be like, yeah, I don't believe in your bad dream, man. <laughs> and it's just yeah. like, Glenn, what are you doing? There's no consistency. <laughs> he's having a hard time is what he's doing. That's true. But yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, to, uh, to wrap up, thanks for listening to Casual Obsession, um, the, uh, the, horror the horror movie, movie podcast, podcast that talks about horror movies. Review horror movies. <laughs> uh, next time... <laughs> Is oh yeah. Next time is my pick. We are going to be talking about Overlord. It's from 2018, which is a little more recent than anything Yay. we've talked about. Uh, it is on as of uh, what's November. As of recording right now, November, it is on Hulu. Yes. Um, if you want to watch that, I will throw out some trigger warnings ahead of time. Uh, very body gory. Um, and th- it's the Nazis. It's the Nazis. It's it is. I feel like a war movie, almost a war movie first, and a horror movie second. So just be aware of that going in. Um, but also, if that sounds like fun to you, oh my goodness, is it fun? Yeah, enjoy alt history Normandy. No, uh, no, Emma. <laughs> that was so bad. I thought you were Noah for a minute there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have but any yeah, idea no. how bad a joke has to be? <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, this episode should be coming out like right after Thanksgiving, shouldn't it? So uh, yeah. hopefully all yeah. of you survived that. I know I've already been having a hard time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Happy as late always, Thanksgiving. I'm Emma. You can find me on Twitter at MJ2017 or on Twitch at Emma Panada if you want to talk to me. I'm Noah. You can find me as Bubba the Bad, B U B B A D A B A D, on Twitch, Twitter, and Insta. Uh, yeah. I like talking about movies. Don't reach out to me on Instagram. That's weird. But I will happily tweet with you on Twitter. <laughs> um, I'm Nina. I am Nina Wolverina on Twitter. I also have a horror-specific Twitter, House Usher Rises, where I retweet other horror artists because recently I haven't drawn anything scary. But uh, I, I do like retweeting other artists. So if you like horror art, I can maybe expose you to some new stuff. Uh, I'm also Nina Wolverina pretty much everywhere else. Twitch, Instagram, Facebook. So there you go. (laughs) (laughs) MeWe. And you can find me, Jeff, on Twitter at Bubba Wubba Dab. (coughs) B-U-B-B-B-B-B-B-B. That's something in my throat there. Uh, and also on Instagram beat. at the Hammer of Jeff. All right. uh, follow the podcast. And you can find the podcast Twitter at Casual Horror Pod. Uh, and we also have a Facebook. Yep. We're on That's Facebook. About it. It's not too. as fun. The Twitter's uh, better. Yep. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely follow the Twitter. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, that's everything. Thank you for listening this week. And we will be back with Overlord next time. And we'll see you in Yay. your dreams. Ooh. 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 Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs>